Okay, welcome to Shea First Physics, where we're going to go over physics problems as quickly as we possibly can with the most understanding. So let's go ahead and get started. Now today we're going to be working with Newton's second law. Remember, that means that force equals mass times acceleration, and we're going to be taking a look at that stubborn mule. So the farmer needs to buy a hat for his mule. Of course, why wouldn't he? Of course, the mule needs to go to the store to get fitted for the hat because their heads are kind of odd shaped. And when the farmer is walking the mule to the store, the mule stops in his tracks, Err! and the farmer mules and pulls, okay, it should be pulls and pulls, on the mule to no avail. He pulls on the mule horizontally with a force of 15 newtons. Hmm, that seems kind of small. The 200 kilogram mule finally begins to accelerate forward at 0.1 meters per second squared, what must be the coefficient of friction between the hooves of the mule and the ground. That's what we're going to find. Now, it doesn't matter what we're looking for. Oh, yeah, we are going to change that force. That is a, a bit more realistic. What we're going to do is we're going to change our representation. All of those words get kind of confusing. It makes us go, ah, and overwhelms us, and we shut down. So the hat store, yes, on the right, that is a hat. Okay, maybe it's a sombrero. On the left, I know you're blown away by my amazing artistic ability, but we have a farmer pulling the mule. We're going to get all or squeeze in the juice of this problem, completely replacing the problem with pictures. So we have our hat store on the right, we have the farmer and the mule, the farmer's pulling on that mule. So the very first thing we need to do is create a free body diagram. So let's go ahead and start this free body diagram. Now, I represent my free body diagrams using boxes. So in order to figure out what kind of force is on this mule, let's pretend we're the mule. And what's touching us? What do we experience? Well, we're always going to experience gravity if we're on a planet such as the Earth. The other thing the mule is feeling is the floor of the Earth pushing up on him. And he also feels that farmer yanking on him, yanking on him to the right. And opposite of motion or intended motion is going to be that force of friction. And that's how we figure out what the direction is. We know he's moving to the right. So his friction is going to be to the left. Now let's say the farmer was pulling really hard and couldn't move him. He's intending to move him to the right. The friction will still be to the left. That's what's acting against him. Now we keep these forces separate. What I mean by that is all of the forces running up and down, we're going to keep completely separate from the forces running right and left. We're going to sum all of the forces in that horizontal direction, and we're also going to sum all of the forces in the vertical direction. The beautiful thing is we don't even have to remember what we're looking for because we're going to do it the same every single time. Let's make sure to get that axis up there to remind us that positive x is going to be to the right and that means 300 newtons is positive and the force of friction is negative because it's going to the left. The same thing with the y direction. Normal force is positive because it's going up gravity force is negative because it's going down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say the sum of all forces in the x direction, Newton told us is the same thing as mass times acceleration in the x direction. Hi Max, how you doing? And we're just going to keep substituting what we know step by step. We know the force of friction. You see the force of friction here is equivalent to coefficient of friction times normal force. Now we're just plugging in those numbers and we get to the point of, ah, we don't know mu and we don't know normal force. We freak out and I'm going to tell you, put the brakes on it and relax. Wait for it. Wait for it. We have a whole nother equation to work on. Newton's second law told us that the sum of all forces in the y direction is the same thing as May. Hi, May. Now, we have no acceleration. The mule is at a constant velocity of zero up and down. He's not jittering up and down. So and it, our acceleration in the y direction is zero. On the right-hand side, let's just rewrite that so we don't fall off the screen here. On the right-hand side, we have our normal force minus the mass times g. Now remember, g is just the magnitude of our acceleration due to gravity, which we're going to estimate as 9.8 today. Now we're just going to rewrite this again. Um, 
and simplify it. Every single line just gets simpler and simpler and simpler. If you end up with just one variable, woohoo, party time, you're going to solve something. Is it going to be what you want to solve for? Who knows, but keep going. Okay, now here we just ended up with the normal force. Hey, wait a minute. Wasn't normal force one of the things we didn't know when we were working on the other side? So let's go ahead and take that normal force, which is 1,960 newtons, put it back into the other side. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that bad boy, put him back into the sum of the forces in the x direction. So I told you we'd find it. So if we go back to the other side, we're going to keep simplifying. 200 times 0.1 is just going to be 20 equals 300 minus coefficient of friction. We still don't know what that is. Times the normal force, which now we know what it is, 1960. Woo woo. Yeah, now it's party time. Celebrate. Each little step you do, celebrate. Don't get overwhelmed. As long as you're taking baby steps, you're going to be okay. You got to keep those baby steps going, though. Now we just have coefficient of friction to solve for. And if I remember correctly, I don't know, you can rewind if you want. That's what we were looking for. So let's go ahead and do that division. We're going to find the friction force between the hooves and the ground. 0.1429 something 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 is what the calculator spits out using our sig figs so we see here oh Shay first forgot to put in those decimals but the lowest number of sig figs was two so we're going to round our answer to two sig figs coefficient of friction is unitless we are done box that answer and we did it any questions put on the comments. Thank you so much for checking us out. This is us. By us, I mean me. But we finished it. Go ahead and subscribe. And comment. Comment what your questions are, and I'll answer them or create a video for you. Make it a good one.